Hi everyone, Emily Gibbons here. I'm talking about the multi-sensory phonics games bundle update. Okay, so I have a video for this that I'll walk you through, and then I'm going to piece together a second video about how to split screen some of these games. So just hang tight while I walk you through this portion and then the second portion um, will walk you through how to do that. Okay, so uh, why did I do this? Well, from the beginning, I knew I wanted to make these games a little easier to play online, um, but uh, all of these changes that I've made take time. <laughs> so I hope that you um, find this update useful. So how can you get it? So if you already have the PDF, then all you would do is click on the link in that, and that's where you would uh, make a copy, and this new copy will be the updated version. So there's really no reason to go in and re-download the whole thing from Teachers Pay Teachers. You're just using the same link from the PDF. Obviously, if you're a new purchaser and you need to go in and download it there, then it will be there for you in the PDF, okay? All right, so I'm going to walk through how I've adapted these games. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit here. Okay, so let's go to this one first. So this one's called Big Pig, and what you'll notice is that there will be links that say click here for cards. So instead of having to print out and cut these cards, which is hard to do if you're teaching remotely, you, could, you can if you use a document camera, but if you want to play it virtually, then what I've done, if you click on this link, is paired the cards um, in a, on a website called Wordwall. Now, I have, I have permission for commercial use on this website to do that with my resources. So when you play, then the cards that I deal here have words that are the same words that are here. They're just dealt this way. So I highly recommend that when you're playing the game that you split screen. So you open two browser tabs and you size them side by side so that you aren't having to click back and forth. So you'll have the game on one side and the cards dealing on the other. And that works really nicely. And as you continue watching this tutorial, you'll see what I mean because I, um, I walk you through how to do that and how it all looks and things like that. Okay, so that is how I've adapted games that have word cards. You'll just click on the link and you'll see word cards come up like in a deck of cards. Okay, so I'm gonna just close out of that link. Let's scroll down a little bit to this one. So with start and finish games, I'm just gonna move these. You'll notice these are game pawns that you can move across the board or your students can move. We have the game cards here. And I also have a link to a virtual die. And so I'll show you as you watch further on in this tutorial how I share all of that. And um, it's not, it's really not very difficult at all. But I'll just show you this link if you click on the die. I really tried to find one that didn't have a lot of ads, and this is the best one I could come up with. You do want to. Um, change it down to one die because I only use one six sided die. Click on the pink button and it rolls for you. So that is <laughs> a lot of researching here. That's the best one I could find. Okay. Without all those ads popping up for your kids. You don't want all that. 
Okay, let's, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit further. Let's say, let me just back up. Okay, let's go to this one. Here's a good one, okay. To spin a blend. All right, so here is the game board. And, and don't forget that, I just wanna point this out. You still have the PDF version, okay? So you have the PDF and you have the virtual. This is, th this link will open up a wheel. So let's go there. And what I've done is created a spinning wheel that has the same blends that are on that board game. Okay, so once a student does that, they grab one of these little transparent circles. Where did I spin? I don't remember, SW, <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go to SW or a SWAM. And it's one of those nice transparent circles so you can still see the word through it, okay? All right. For concentration, concentration games right here. Okay, here's how we've done that. Okay, so I'm gonna go down a little bit here. Uh, let me find one. Let's go to, sorry, there's a lot of games. <laughs> okay. So I click on this one and there are the concentration game, um, cards for that game, okay? And you just follow the same directions, okay? So, um, for, let's find a different one. For cube games, let me go up. Let's go to this one. Okay. What we've done here is instead of having to cut out the cube, all we have done is just change this into a spinner instead. Okay. So that instead of a cube that you would cut out, you would spin. And it works the same way. It just has six bases. Okay. And I think I have gone through mostly all, oh, I know, one more. Oh, there's some of them where there's the brownie game and you have to have the, the game cards. And we have the cards there, but sometimes we want to click and drag the words onto the plate. Okay, so you'll see those are clickable and you can drag those words onto the plate. I believe that's part of the direction. I'm trying to think of there is one more. I believe it's a lot of games here. <laughs> um, like for ice cream sundae, they have to build their ice cream sundae with scoops. So those are clickable and, and you can drag them over, okay? All right, I hope you found that helpful and uh, have fun playing these games with your students. So, I'm gonna turn up my volume a little bit there so you can hear me a little bit better, sorry about that. So this is one of the games. And what you'll notice is to make this playable online, that means if you're virtually teaching and you're not seeing your students in person, uh, what I've done is add links to cards that will deal 
or spinners that will spin or dice um, or movable cards or game pawns just to make things a little easier to play online so you don't have to do um, so much adapting. The easiest way I have found to share a game is to pull up three different browser tabs or two and minimize the different browser pages down so that you split screen so you have the game on one side and you have the cards on the other and for this game there's dice as well to roll now i have searched high and low for dice that are virtual that have very few ads that's a big problem I have found one that works the best for teachers and students so I've included the link to that for you to use okay so if we're playing chase the Oct octopus so what we we'll want to do is we'll want to move the game pawns so there are two game pawns to start okay and I had already gone ahead and dealt the card, but I'll show you how it works. So we're gonna deal, well, the way it works is, first we're gonna roll the die. So I have three different screens here, actually, and three different browsers open and I've minimized the screens. I have my game and Google slides. I have the link to the cards here on this side. And I have a third, because I want the dice to roll and I don't want to have to click back and forth where it just gets distracting and confusing and time consuming. Okay, so if we're playing to start, then we're going to roll. So let's pretend like some, somebody's taking a turn. So I'm going to click on, and if you can see this, I've made the screen pretty small at the bottom. There's a pink box that says roll dice. So I have chosen just one die because it's all we need, not two. And I'm just going to click on that pink. Okay, I rolled a three. First, I have to take my turn though. So what's going to happen is that a card will be dealt. Okay, there will be the card. And here we go. There is the card. The student can read it. Um, the student will have to practice spelling it on their uh, whiteboard at home, whatever they're doing right? And then they're allowed to move ahead three spaces. So one, two, three. Oh, I landed on an arrow, so I'm allowed to move ahead an extra space there. Okay, so let's say it was the other player going. Okay, so I'm going to roll the die. Doo -doo -doo. There, I rolled a five. Okay, so in order to do that, deal a card. Okay, I spell top on my board. I read it. Spell it, T O P top, and move ahead five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I landed on the shell. Okay, I'm gonna keep going until somebody winds up at the finish line. Okay, so that is how it would work if you had to have multiple screens open. So, for I will say the majority of these games. About 95% of the time, you'll have to have, uh, more like 90% of the time, I'd say, I don't know. Um, you'll have to have two screens open. So you'll have to just go into your start menu and just open up Chrome or Firefox or Microsoft Edge, whatever you use for your internet. Um, and then all you have to do is just shrink it down in the corners to size it to fit to your laptop screen, okay? But some of the games you are gonna have to open a third tab so that you can have the die nearby. That way, it's totally visible to the student. The other thing I learned is if you're teaching in Zoom, just learned this piece of advice today, there is a way to share just a portion of your screen and that is when you click on share screen you'd go into an advanced there's an advanced tab and it will say portion of screen you only have to share a small portion of it and that's 
really, really nice. So especially if you just want to share just the game board, so your student isn't looking at the slides and Google Slides off to the sidebar. So ch definitely check that out. Play around with it. I just learned about that added tip. Um, that's just for Zoom, though. I, I don't think it works for Google Meet. Sorry about that. Okay, so I hope that helps you. And um, look for that update. You go into Teachers Pay Teachers um, and grab the link there to download. Or if you already have this, then all you have to do is go back to that PDF and just click on the link and the update is there. Okay. All right. Take care.